everyone welcome to a new video i hope that you are staying safe and healthy and in this video i am painting seven simple fruits and vegetables before starting the tutorial i'm going to quickly go over the materials i am using my winter and newton watercolor brushes my montmartre watercolor set my sign me aquarelle brush pens my medium sized Chinese brush and my Canson 300 GSM mixed media sketchbook okie dokie so in this video I'm going to be painting a broccoli, avocado, kiwi, garlic, chili, papaya and an aubergine I pulled reference photos for each one and before painting I drew out simple sketches of each fruit and vegetable making sure they aren't too close together and can fit nicely on my page. When looking at your reference photos, since we are keeping this illustrative, cute and simple, you want to focus on the main shape of the fruit or vegetable that makes it recognisable. So, for example, the papaya and the avocado has that simple shape of a more wider and shorter bowling pin, which is made of two main rounded forms. So, just like a bowling pin, the top is narrower and more pointy, and the bottom is wider and thicker. So, overall, this is the shape of an avocado and a papaya, but have it more rounded, and the top narrower part is about one third of the fruit and the bottom curves smoothly round and of course the avocado has one seed which is a stone while the papaya has these many pearl like seeds so pick out the main features of each fruit and vegetable simplifying the shape so that we don't get caught up on all the tiny details but still able to distinguish what it is also, the reference is only a guide, so pick and choose what you want to include, adjust the shape, the angle, the colours to how you want it to look. The photo is to remind you of the form of the object, how tones change when bouncing off the object, and suggest the colours to use if you want to stay true to the original colours. Okay, so when you are happy with your sketches, then we can get into the painting. I'm using my Sign Me markers to start with as they are bright and colourful, matching these illustrative fruit and vegetable. Starting off with the broccoli, I painted a light layer of dark green, and while it is still wet, I go into it adding a yellow in the lighter areas. The yellow will blend with the dark green to make a lighter green. Then I painted a light green layer for the stem and then went in with a bright dark green for the shadows. Because the top of the broccoli is very textured with all these little bumps, to get that effect I gently damped where I wanted the shadows to be. Dabbing or stippling more where I wanted it to be darker and then gradually less to where it is getting to the lighter areas. As I am stippling, I am rotating my brush slightly so that it will create more different and uneven dots. Make sure when you are stippling, you don't have too much water on your brush as you want these dots to be darker and also excess water will disturb the existing paint you have that is wet on your page. Then using a dark green and a small brush, using the very tip of the brush to get those thin lines, I painted in the shadows of the stem. Keep in mind that there will be shadows under the bushy top of the broccoli and making shadows in thin lines along the length of the stem to show its different texture. Then that's the first layer done and I'm doing the green of the kiwi. I used clean water to pre-wet the centre of the kiwi, then I gently added yellow to the very centre and then a light green to the outer edge and gently blend the two colours together while it is still wet. Then I did the same thing for the green area of the avocado, but instead of adding one colour, which is that yellowy green colour. If you want to add two colours with it more yellow near the centre and green on the outer edge then that is another thing you could do. 
You can see that I am doing all the green first, except for the papaya, which I forgot to do. The reason for this is because, well, there is quite a few green areas, and I have limited space on my palette, and I can't mix all the colours on one palette. So doing the same colours first can help with this, but another reason, especially if you're using quite a few colours, like I will be doing, Painting cool colours and warm colours separately because doing cool colours and then changing your water glass with clean water can help prevent your colours getting muddy. So there's another off camera tip that can help you out. So I continue by using the same wet on wet technique which is pre-wetting with the clean water before adding my colours on top. This helps with getting soft smooth blends and if you wanted flat tones of colour and painting fruit and vegetable in this way is very useful to practice your wet on wet and wet on dry techniques for beginners. If the area is quite dark, then I won't do a wet on wet layer as a base, but paint directly onto the dry paper. And this is the wet on dry technique, which you can see me do at the outside of the avocado, which is a layer of dark green wet on dry. And then I go over with short strokes to create that bumpy texture. This section is very dark and textured, so a smooth layer with the wet on wet technique is not necessary here as it will be less noticeable. I generally use the wet on dry technique for final details. So moving on, I use the same dark green that I used for the outside of the avocado to paint the outline along the outside of the avocado as a thin layer of the avocado skin that will be peeping through. Then once the green section of the kiwi was dry, I painted in the brown base of the skin. This is going to be quite textured, so again I am painting this with a wet on dry technique and again paint the outline where the skin will be peeping through. I painted the very centre with a faint yellow. Then with a slightly darker green than I used for the green centre of the kiwi, I painted lines coming out from the centre. And then with a yellowy green, I gently painted over the lines and the yellow centre. Then I left it to dry before painting the seeds on top. Using the same brown and picking up only a little bit of the paint so as to keep my strokes very light, I painted in the shadows of the garlic. Using a lot of short-ish strokes as garlic is not perfectly smooth and making sure that the shadows curve along with the curved sections of the garlic around the different cloves. And then for the very edge that is away from where the light is coming from, in my case the light is coming from the left, then the right edge of the cloves will be darker. Alrighty, so I painted the second layer and final layer of the broccoli. So with a darker green, this time I mixed with a bit of brown from the garlic to get a more realistic green, I stippled in the shadows and creating a slight gradient as it gets to the lighter areas. And then adding more shadows to the stem and the very bottom of the broccoli. And that's the broccoli done. Okay, onto the green of the chili. Using a dark green, I painted in the shadows of the top of the chili, making sure the layer underneath is dry so that I can make finer lines. Then I did the same for the aubergine but using two greens, one for the mid-tone and one for the darkest tone. Then once the last layer of the kiwi was dry, I painted in the black seeds of the kiwi. In my restaurant photo, there seems to be more seeds along the dark green lines and smaller seeds towards the center. And then once I was happy with the seeds, my kiwi was done. Now for the final layer of the avocado. Once the yellowy green area is dry, then you can paint the stone in the center without worrying about the paint bleeding. I paint this with a brown, yellow and an orange. And since you want this to be soft and smooth, I used a wet on wet technique with a light yellow base. 
And then while it was still wet, I added my orange as a mid-tone between my brown and then using my brown for the shadows. And then gently blend the colours together and this is the avocado done. On to the garlic. Okay, so the garlic has these funky purple pink highlights, so it makes a colour that you like and only have a little bit of this paint on your clean wet brush as you want this very light. As the garlic is white, we want it to be majority white, so gently paint around the existing brown lines a little and when you're done with the purple, then that is the garlic done. Four down, three to go. So, with my Chinese brush, I painted a red base. This could have been done with a wet on wet technique, but because I am using a thicker brush that holds a lot more water, I am able to paint the red section quite quickly and having it still wet enough, creating that flat tone. So, that's another way to go about it if you're feeling lazy and it's a small enough area. And then while it is still wet, I added a second colour. This was meant to be a brown to make a darker red, but it didn't really do that much. But don't worry about this because this is only the base layer. Okay, so for the aubergine, this one purple section is quite big. So it's best to pre-wet with clean water first and then add your colours. With this aubergine, you need to make sure your page stays wet as the entire section is very smooth. So you want to make sure you have enough time to add all your colours into this one layer if you can. But of course, make sure that you don't add too much water that you have puddles on your page. So, mix your colours beforehand if it's easier for you before pre-wetting the page. I mixed three different tones your lightest, your mid-tone, and then your darkest for the shadows. And then swatch the colours so that you are happy with them. At first, I thought I was happy with the colours, but later I changed my mind. If this was the case for you, then let it dry, and then we can paint the second layer together. Now for the papaya. Pre-wet the orange area with clean water, add that peachy orange colour, and then I added yellow to the very outer edge. And then gently blend it together as always. Then I faintly painted the centre in the middle in between the seeds. You can paint this loosely as the seeds are very dark and we'll paint over it anyways. And then we go back to the aubergine. So, I accidentally cut it out, but I pre-wet the entire purple section with clean water, and then I added a warmer purple. So, to make a warmer purple, I added more magenta or crimson or red, to put it simply, as both red and blue mixed together makes purple. So, a warmer purple means more red is mixed with blue to make that purple. And then, for a cooler purple, which I use for the shadows, I added more blue, so then when it's blended, it would mix to make a cooler purple. When adding the colour, I was careful to not put paint on top of the highlight, as I still want it there. And I left a small area around the highlight untouched, in case it bleeds towards the highlight. When pre-wetting, you want to use clean water, as if it isn't clean enough, the colour of the water will be apparent on the highlight, and may mix with the colour that you add on top changing the original colour you intended it to be. Also, for the second layer, it's important that you pre-wet the entire purple section, including the highlight, because if you don't, then you won't achieve that soft blend between the purple and the highlight. There are some dots on my aubergine, that was because I hadn't fully watered down and broken down the dried watercolour paint. So, if you are using a more affordable watercolour set, don't rush like me, so that you can avoid these added dots. On to the papaya. So, using a wet on wet technique and using my Chinese brush, I pre-wet the outside section of the papaya with clean water. And then I added my greens and yellow. 
and gently blend the colors together as always. Then using Scarlet to get that chili red red, I painted in the darker areas of the chili, leaving some areas of the bottom layer still showing and using this as the highlights. While the paint is still wet, you can add a darker red mixed with a little bit of dark brown for the shadows. And that is my chili done. And lastly, the inside of the papaya. For the many seeds, using a dark brown and a hint of black, I painted in each seed but leaving a small dot for the highlight to make it look round and shiny. Using a thin brush and a little patience and making your way round to each and every seed. If you are lazy then you can paint all the seeds entirely with the brown paint and add white highlights with gouache or acrylic or white gel pen or anything else that's white that does the trick. Then I mixed a brownie orange and painted in the very center of the papaya under the seeds. And that is all seven fruits and vegetables done. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this fruit and vegetable collection, then you can check out my fruit and veggies playlist. I would really appreciate it if you liked this video and subscribe for weekly Saturday videos where I paint flowers, animals, landscapes, as well as other watercolor and drawing related videos. And as always, God bless and I'll see you later.